morning, everybody. Jimmy Faulkner from the shops again. I'm the service center manager for Dallas Fire Rescue. Uh, we're going to go or do a walk around inspection and kind of a morning checkout on our 103 foot Crimson Aerials here. So there's a lot of stuff that we covered with you guys on just basic cab. Uh, realistically, the cabs on all of our vehicles are pretty much the same with the exception of a little bit of a lowered roof on the ladder trucks because they don't have the extended roof up there on the top. But uh, we're going to walk around it and show you a couple of things that are kind of uh, pretty important for the aerial. Uh, one of the first things that you'll want to look at before you even start your unit is you're going to want to make sure that you have enough hydraulic oil to do what you need to do. Now on all of the newer aerials we had so much trouble with the guys uh, having to climb up on the vehicles. We got the manufacturer to put our sight glass up in this compartment with a glass door. So you can look in the glass door uh, inside that compartment and you can see that your hydraulic oil is full. Behind these doors on some of the newer aerials, these are the manual controls for the front outriggers. Uh, the outriggers are basically like a post style outrigger. So what we're going to be looking for in here, uh, if you guys don't like the, you know, the oil and everything, get your pair of the Paramagic gloves. Uh, reach up in here and just run your fingers up underneath the fittings. Look for gross oil and contaminants and everything that's in here. Uh, look for stuff that's loose. Shake stuff. Don't be afraid to shake things that are here, guys. Uh, and look around here and kick this plate. This plate right here, uh, what happens a lot of times when the guys bottom out or they hit a curb, especially on the rear ones when you guys are, are doing on a big angle of departure, you'll break some of the attaching bolts on these plates. So in the morning it's better to find out that that's really loose and come down here and get it fixed than it is to have it fly off. Anytime you set this aerial up, you put those pads down. Whether it's in the station, outside, out of fire, testing, whatever, you put those pads and stuff down. Uh, you have some auxiliary tank drains. Now what we did is we made it a little bit easier for you guys to be getting the water out of it because we had a, a, a group of trucks that uh, had a lot of problems with water. You guys remember it because we were always putting brake valves and drain valves in here. Uh, you just pull on these handles. You can see this one has a little water in it. So that's what we're looking for. It's really not that much, but you'll get condensate water and everything that comes out of these drains. Pull all of them. Some of them will be dry. Some of them will be wet. You can pull them out, you can drain them out, and then you can restart your vehicles. Uh, while you're doing this, it's the same way like it was in the engine. Look for your oil, look for your glitter, uh, check your tire treads and look at that. Uh, you'll look up there and see whether you have a film or wetness on your cylinder, uh, whether you have any dripping, whether you have any oil that's up there, and you can kind of do a real quick visual on any of your attaching bolts to see if they're loose. For you guys that are new and working on the aerial ladder trucks, this line right here where this outrigger is on both sides is dead center in the aerial for the turntable. So if you guys are coming in, uh, they give you a set and they tell you set up on the corner on the Bravo Charlie side or set up uh, for a window on the fourth floor. This is the exact center. So if that window's kind of right here, you can watch it. If you put this right here, you're going to be right at 90 degrees off and you'll be perpendicular to what, you, what you're working on. Underneath the steps, there's a door that will actually come off and those are your manual outrigger overrides. The controls, everything that we'll be working on in the back are electric, electromechanical. You can use electric and it will allow the, the spool valves to open and the hydraulics to work. But there's manual handles inside here and they're labeled for exactly what you have. So if you ever have to go to manual and you have an electric problem, all you have to do is read the directions, use that handle and make sure when you got your head in this hole and you're on this side, uh, that nobody's in the way, and especially on the other side, make sure you have a spotter. We're back here in the back of the unit. We have two doors. These are the control doors. Here's your electrohydraulic controls. Uh, you have three sets of controls here. You have a front jack, which is up and down. Those are your post jacks. Your beam, which will allow the beam to go out. Uh, run the beam down, and then there's a rear jack. That's the rear jack that comes down. You have the same thing on both sides. Got green lights that you're going to be checking and making sure that all of those work so that you're properly planted and you have weight. Make sure all of your ladders are inside, you're good to go. You guys do a pretty good job of taking care of the stuff here at the 24 house. So all the stuff is in here, it's clean, it's marked. Uh, you can tell right away that something's missing if everything's here in the hole and it's, and it's properly marked. We're going to come around the side. We finished our check there on the captain's side. We're just going to look at some stuff same way uh, as we did our engine companies to look at that. Some of the differences here is you have two receivers in the front that stick out here so that you guys can use your 8,000 pound Warren and Ramsey winches. Uh, their pins are just the same like trailer plugs like when we're pulling boats or we're pulling uh, heavy equipment in the pins and you have your electric connections right here. They're military plugs where you can plug your winch inside there and do that. Uh, the winches, the 8,000 pound winches, if this ladder truck is stuck, will not pull it out. 
so don't even try it uh, up on the top if you're looking just look for loose stuff now this particular company they're all they're carrying their uh, rigging on on the ladder some guys do some guys don't you have a hose roller up here for rope to do some rope rescue and here's a place where you can hook your carabiners a lot of the companies are carrying this in their compartments and some guys do it I mean it's personal preference for the company check your nozzles make sure stuff is tight look for leaks look for broken stuff look for chains and just again hit your stuff up here okay we're gonna get in the cab uh, we left the master switch on so we had lights we're gonna turn our ignition on and we're gonna wait for all of our gauges to cycle through you get it all done hit your starter button let it start check your gauges make sure there's no warning on our VMUX screen we're gonna put it in, in PTO our aerial power we're gonna put it to on make sure our parking brake is on the first thing that we're gonna to want to do is make sure there's nobody or nothing in the way our chocks are up underneath the wheel now watch how we just pick the weight of the truck just a little bit up that's all we need right now the beam comes out first now our rear jack goes down now notice I put it all the way down set it up I got a little bit of weight off the truck the beam is out now you'll notice on this side the other side we were, were a little bit over the crown of the road that other jack planted itself and this one's at full extension and it's not all the way down that's going to be a pretty common occurrence depending on where you are on the crown of the road we've got a little bit of the weight off on the front jacks but right now it's just a really good time we can walk around and we can look for leaks again your paramedic gloves we're going to look here there'll be leaks here there'll be leaks here or be coming out or you, there's a, a hole here and it will be sliding out here if there's any hydraulic oil leakage inside the beam the leveling beam beam cylinder is a large cylinder right here and you'll have a little bit of hydraulic area and stuff that's in here and there's hydraulic fluid and everything that's under here I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna pick the front and the rear up so that I pick the truck up even and even alright so my front jack and my rear beam now we've got the weight off of the springs and the suspension in the front we've got the rear tires up off the ground the turntable is level, the longitudinal part of the truck is level, the lateral part of the truck is level, and we're going to shut this stuff down here. We have three green lights, because if we go upstairs, if we go up top and these three green lights aren't on, the outrigger light won't release and the aerial won't come up. Green good to go, shut it. Green good to go, shut it. Okay, we're coming up, guys. We're coming up the ladder. Old safety rule, three points of contact at every time. Unsnap your chains, lock yourself in here. Look down the aerial, make sure nothing looks bad. Look at your cables. Make sure that your, your axe in the front is in its nest. The pipe pole is in the nest and the ladder is strapped to the side. I'm gonna step on this dead man switch and you're gonna hear a clunk. All right, when you do that, go to raise it that ladder comes up out of the cradle and you raise you rotate and you extend watch for it that it doesn't dog walk because if it does that's pretty indicative of a loose cable or a problem with the, with the shift wheels normally we would go we would rotate our nozzle left right up down try it for fog and straight stream but we have a gen set up here that runs on hydraulic power uh, hydraulic oil goes in here you, this is a, a visual where you have to look at it and see it and it's turn it, it's literally running all of the time you have a switch on the dash that says excite the generator which closes the field and makes electrical current but this is running all of the time looking at stuff here just touch your cables watch that you don't don't ever run your hands up them just tap them but you're looking for frays you're looking for leaks here and you're looking to see if there's any fluid there. You're looking to see if there's any fluid there. That's just dirt, which is normal for this kind of operation. If that's wet there, that's something we're gonna report. All right, troops, we, got, we have our ladder down and you can see it's in the rescue position. It's locked to the fly section. 
Uh, the primary reason for this is if you guys are performing rescue, it allows you to get into the windows, it allows you to get up underneath, it allows you to reach across parapets where you can drop your roof ladders in there and you can do that stuff. Uh, and also if you're going to do any hoisting or, or any rigging, it, it keeps that stuff and keeps your nozzles out of the way. Uh, what you want to look at here is just make sure everything's tight, your stuff is here. If you can do this in the morning, it's great. Uh, look at, make sure all of your linkage and everything here is tight on your arm. Actually here we've just found one, that's a good way to do it. This is a real good crew, but this is the kind of stuff that gets loose. Alright guys, we're going to pick it up, and again, you know, kind of the same way that we did it, uh, doing it lateral, uh, doing it, don't let them down where the, where the truck dips. If you can actually reach these where you can set the whole truck down at the same time, uh, you can do it. Uh, you can do one side at a time with the front jack and the beam, the other side, or if you can reach them and you have people that are spotting and looking, you can grab them all and you can put it down even. See how we did not torque the vehicle at all? Guys, you're working with a vehicle that's 11 feet, 8 inches tall, weighs 71,000 pounds or 35 and a half tons. Uh, it's not going to turn on a dime and give you 8 cents change, and it's not going to stop really fast. So you got to watch when you're doing, pay attention on your corners and your room. Uh, watch when you get in the areas where you have potholes in the street, because the rear ends will actually shift and cause the rear end to move a little bit. And the most important thing in this thing is just take your time, walk around it. Uh, find the guys in the station that were really using these trucks. There's a lot of these old warriors that are out here that are doing these trucks. They really know it and they can teach you. Learn it. Do it the same way every time. Uh, pay attention to what you're doing. There's a book that Lieutenant Manshart will put out there on the IDS. It's an operator's manual. Uh, in that operator's manual, all of the stuff that's really pertinent to our particular vehicles is highlighted. So you can do that kind of stuff. And the most important stuff is be safe, be slow, get there. God bless y'all.